Welcome to my Connecting Networks Lab review. Here we're dealing with Packet Tracer file 4226, Configuring Frame Relay Point to Point. All right, so what I already have done is I got Packet Tracer up and running for about a minute. I'm going to go through the objective and the scenario. All right, so I'm going to start with part one. Part one says hop on R1. I'm assuming get to our CLI. Get to our global configuration mode. Big T. Now once I've done that, let's go ahead and go to our interface serial zero. From there, we're gonna do our in cap frame relay. And we're gonna turn it on. So no shutdown. So that turns it on. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for R2 and R3. You're going to notice all of them are connected to this frame relay cloud. Config T and serial and cap frame relay, no shut. So that's turning on frame relay. And it's telling it to encapsulate it using frame relay. Config T and serial encap frame relay, no shut. All right, so that turns it on. So from the command prompt from PC connect, verify connectivity. Well, one thing is, just because we set up frame relay does not mean that it's functioning yet. Well, that's what this is trying to, to prove. 192.168.30.10. It should fail. Because just because we turn on frame, re uh, frame relay, it did not mean that we set up the connections. We did not set up our DLCIs, so it doesn't know how to forward the traffic appropriately. So this should fail. R1 must be configured with a frame relay on a sub interface so that it can find the next hop interface. Notice we have two separate networks, R3 and R2. So we're actually going to set up a point to point between R1 and R2, or R1 and R3, and between R1 and R2. Just like on R2, we'll set up between R2 and R1, R2 and R3. And on R3, we're going to set up reverse path from R3 to R1 and R3 to R2, hence the appropriate DLCs. You'll notice that very common within the Cisco curriculum, uh, R1 to R3. I bet that will be 103 and that will go to R3's 301. Notice they just kind of flip the DLCIs and that's how we can match them when you deal with Cisco. Uh, that's just a common practice that you do. All right, so part two is all about configuring that frame relay. I'm actually going to do this via a notepad. So int, we're setting up a sub interface. Point to point. IP address with the appropriate wildcard mask, frame relay, interface, DLCI 102, and exit. I'm going to copy and paste for subinterface 3. And I'm going to be updating the IP addresses based off of our diagram. 3.2 DLC 103. All right, I'm going to read a little bit further down. So we're going to go ahead and also add EIGRP. 
the router EIGRP and it stands one network we're going to add in the appropriate networks with the appropriate wildcard mask verify okay so I should be able to let's see if I fat fingered anything I should be able to paste it right in and it took everything so that's good so R1 is done we're gonna go ahead and do R2 and R3 pay attention to the appropriate sub interfaces pay attention to the DLCIs and the IP addresses all right so I'm gonna do R3 next just because I'm gonna go in a circle so again, we're still dealing with, dealing with serial 000. We're gonna do subinterface one and two, except on one, our DL, DLCI will be 301, and our DLCI two will be 302, and go ahead and correct the IP addresses. And 3.1 with the DLCI of 301. Yep, 2.2 .2 with the DLCI of 302, and it is. Double check the IGRP, it looks right. Let's go ahead and paste it. All right, and it accepted it. Next, let's move on to R2. Again, pay attention to the sub interfaces being listed. We're dealing with one and three. So I'm gonna correct the sub interfaces. Next, I'm gonna correct the DLCIs. We're dealing with 201 and 203. Next, let's double check IPs, 10112. 10.1.1.2 and the next one is 10.1.2.1 10.1.2.1 Double check our router EIGRP for these appropriate networks. We need one for one and we need one for two and there we go. So our frame relay should now be done. That's actually why I did it via notepad. It should perform new adjacencies, and it did. I'm gonna go ahead and kick that guy off the screen. Add the appropriate for the AS number one, which we did. Add the appropriate, which we did. All right, so now let's go ahead and verify on R1, show frame relay map. So it will show R3 and R2, which it does. Show, you know what? I'll just stay up arrow B, B, C. And it does show the appropriate DLC numbers and their usage. And now LMI. This is more for our statistics, but again, it does show our sub interfaces, which that's what we wanted. So we are good there. The instructions don't say it, but I want to be thorough. Show frame relay map. You'll notice both point-to-point uh, -point connections is there. Show PVC. Again, you'll notice that they're all there. And the last one is LMI. And that's all there. All right, so I want to go back to this PVC. That's map. I'm going to 
Let's go stop arrow. All right, there we go. DBC status for serial one for DLCI three hundred one for DLCI three hundred two, and that's what we wanted. Lastly, verify PC three or PC can ping laptop. First one I'm expecting to fail, but the rest pick up, and it does. So let's go ahead and verify. 27. We have 27 out of 27, we have 100 out of 100, and that is lab 4226, configuring frame relay point-to-point -point with sub-interfaces. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.